That's it. Look, to, keep looking into the camera. Well, this I would say um, to the Protestant world proves absolutely that uh, I set out to uh, give you the information proving me who I am. But all I got from the Protestant world was uh, criticism, uh, threats, uh, hate. And so um, of all the threats and hates and venom I got from the world coming in, uh, from as far as I know, none were Catholic. So, as I was born on Rothschild Avenue, that's an indication that the devil, of course, is Rothschild. And uh, as the Protestants uh, are the force that the Jews used to attempt to destroy Rome, there's only one organization in the world that does did it, dedicate itself to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that is the entire Catholic Church, and they venerate my mother. Uh, without doubt, uh, the finest woman that's ever lived, chosen by God to bring forth the small child that is going to be God in the flesh. And is why that uh, when she appeared to me as a child, uh, spoke to me as a six-year-old that I was, Jesus, she told me things that I could not um, verify, although I knew it to be truth, because I recognized her as my mother. There was no doubt. At that time, I'm taken back to the outskirts of uh, what would be later known as Nazareth, and told that I was an Essene, and that the Jews would kill us if they found out. So, finally, when I go to the cross, it's uh, a plaque above the cross, King of the Jews. I was King of the Essenes, a little different thing. And so, um, when I finally get to the stage where I can get onto the internet and prove absolutely who I am, um, my attack was to annoy as much as I could the religions of the world that were protestant against the original church set up by Peter. So, if anything, although the church did fall under the influence of Jews and at this stage in life um, of the church, it is almost devoured by the Jews and Freemasons. You'd have to ask why. The Catholic Church is not trying to devour the Protestant churches because that's where the devil is. It's the other way around. So it's blatantly obvious that my task was to annoy as many of these strange cults around the world which say they are representing Jesus, which they're not. And then when it comes time, our first contact with the uh, church, uh, they accept me as being Christ. So uh, throughout the recent years, I'd make predictions something would happen because I wouldn't, and this would make them cry and howl all around the world as this clown in Australia is uh, saying certain things that he's Jesus, he's God, he's this and that. And uh, whatever he says doesn't happen. Of course, the, the idea is to annoy you as much as possible and to uh, prove absolutely, no matter what the proof I've got, which I offered to the church over the last two weeks, they didn't doubt for a second because it's so overwhelming. 
that a man could come along and do the things I do, show the miracles I do, cure AIDS and all these um, dreadful afflictions that are invented by the builders of the world. So the Catholics aren't the builders of the world, they're the spiritual centre. Um, what the builders are, are the stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. So it's the builders, the Freemasons and the Jews that have built the earth, that have rejected me, because they know full well that um, their God is Lucifer and the devil. So we speak to one poor old gentleman that has been trying to rid the church of its filth which is, of course, the Freemasons and the Jews, and uh, was unsuccessful. And in his darkest hour, he finally retires. And at the moment of his uh, retiring, um, the numbers were perfect in that it was 84 years to the day when the Vatican gave the church its, uh, its own principality inside Rome. And... Uh, that afternoon at 5.55, Christ, 5.55 times in the King James Bible. And remember, King James was a Catholic. His mother had been beheaded by the Freemasons. And uh, he was raised by Freemasons, educated by Freemasons, knew all the secrets of the Freemasonry. So he did very little in his reign as king of England. Um, made possible by William Shakespeare, who was Edward de Vere, the right-hand man of Elizabeth, who had ordered the death of his mother. So um, when the manuscript is handed to the king by a homosexual, after 47 Freemason scholars had uh, translated it, handwritten manuscript, manuscript means handwritten, manuscript. Uh, for authorization, uh, they went to work on it, reading it, and inserting the Shakespearean overtones that you see when you read it in the original King James. So then we have it authorized. Shortly after that, without telling anybody, they changed it. So they realized that they had been tricked What was it, around 1785 or something? 1871. 1871. Mm -hmm. They realised that the original King James was a trap. And it was pointing directly towards them as being Lucifer and that the Catholic Church is the only alternative. So when I glanced over it, and I can say I haven't read it, I've read none of Deuteronomy, none of Numbers, um, with the exception of two or three verses, which was enough to make me sick. Um, some of Genesis, again, scattered verses, maybe 5%. Uh, none of Paul, except for the road to Damascus, that nonsense, when, the, when Lucifer appeared to him. Mm, maybe three or four verses of Hebrews. None of... Uh, of uh, the main writings and the body of work, which makes up a third of the New Testament, of attributed to the 14 books of Paul. So I may have read 1% of it. What do I want to read it for? It's got nothing to do with me. The same with Deuteronomy, Numbers, Exodus. Nothing to do with me. Why? Well, it's in, uh, in built. I remember being Jesus. And I remember what I thought of the Jews then. And I remember the nonsense of the Torah. And of course now we see the Talmud and what it's all about. That's the beauty of the computers was invented by the builders, again, uh, for a war machine. And the computers have been turned into... Well, I'll give you an idea. Um, let's say the Americans, um, they're, they're dominated by the skull and bones. I mean, it's pathetic, but it is. And the Jews in their parliament. 
in the Senate. So they develop a war machine and um, they have to get rid of the weapons because uh, they have new ones coming on. So what better way than start a war with Iraq and then get the world to buy all the weapons off them. And um, they don't sell weapons that they can't defend against because the weapons that they have new, newly invented, uh, making the former weapons obsolete so that they get rid of them because they can defend against those weapons and know how these weapons operate. And we see, for example, how they invaded uh, Saudi Arabia with the dollars and then got the same Saudi Arabians to pay the Americans to go in and occupy them with a building a base there. It's amazing how stupid these people are. But they got away with it. So then we contact the Pope. It took him, what, three hours? A couple of emails back and forth, a couple of questions. Next thing he's asking me to rewrite Vatican II. And now they're adopting it. So that's what I do. I set out to annoy the enemies of God and the enemies of my church. And in one foul swoop, I pick up 1.2 billion people because what the Pope says, they go along with it and that's it. So now, within a few hours, uh, the new Pope, his Holiness uh, Francis I, who is a Jesuit. Um, he's able to command the Jesuits to target the Illuminati, get rid of them. Now, these people will kill. So you say, all right, that's not very nice. Well, it is, because um, God gets blamed for everything, anyhow, and as I am God. And now I've got people on the earth that are sworn to defend Jesus unto death and they will do anything. That's the Jesuit oath. You want to look it up. It's quite horrifying. It was written a long time ago. But, uh, it shows a dedication that these people will go to. So if I said take out Obama, um, the nearest Jesuit would kill him. I made a statement many, many years ago about Obama. I said, as far as I'm concerned, if the tea lady in the Oval Office with a little tray walks in and takes an Uzi out and shoots him, that's a freebie. There's no sin in that. You don't get, it's not a sin to kill a demon. That's what we're all trying to do you know, from a religious point of view. So here's Obama and Netanyahu. Uh, I was interviewed on radio at one time and I was asked what would I do if I had the opportunity to go into the White House and the Oval Office and talk with Obama and Netanyahu, and I said, well, can I take a Uzi with a full clip? So that'll solve the world's problem right then. And I am saying that right now. Obama and Netanyahu, the demons are going to get you. The angels are going to get you. The Jesuits are going to get you. Just keep on looking over your shoulder because you're as good as dead. Because uh, that's what I'm telling the Jesuits. Go ahead. Make my day. You did me. I gave them the opportunity to repent. So that's what it's all about. Uh, piss off as many people as possible. Um, and then finally, go to the Catholics and they accept it. Why? Because I was born a Catholic. That's simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple.